Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so a very basic simple plaid to which I'm going to add a little bit of detail, but not too much. And it's something you could probably leave out, but we'll get to that bit anyway. So I am in the shading tab. I've got viewport shading enabled and I've got a principled shader already connected to a material output, which is giving us this. So we want to add a few things to this to give us a checker texture. First up, in fact, we are going to look for a checker texture. So press shift A, search for the checker texture and then put it in position. We're going to connect that up to the base color on the principled shader. And then with the checker texture selected, we're going to press control T to give ourselves a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Make sure the UV output from the texture coordinate is connected to the vector of the mapping node. And you can see what difference that makes there. Now we're going to drag him down because we've got a fair bit to do with him. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do after that is duplicate those two nodes. So the mapping node and the texture node. Connect the UV to the vector on the second mapping node and then mix the two checker textures together using the mix in uh, blending mode and leaving the setting at 0.5. I'm going to change the scale to 3 on both of those. And you can see that's kind of increased it but I'm going to make changes elsewhere as well. And the first area I'm going to make changes is the mapping node, the top one. I'm going to change the X value to 0.5 and the Y value to 10. And then basically the opposite of that on the bottom one. So the X value of 10 and the Y value of 0.5. And you can already see that kind of plaid texture forming there. Right, next up we are going to duplicate the mix node twice and place it in between the original mix node and the principal shader. Now for this one we're going to use multiply and we're going to set the value uh, or the color to white. For the second one again we're using multiply and we're going to increase the factor to 1 and then change this to be whatever our color, base color, we want our fabric to be. So let's go for just a, a basic red. This will be the color you change to change the entire thing. Right, next up, we're gonna make a couple of changes in the principled shader. Specular, I'm gonna drop down to 0.1. And you can see how that took a lot of the shine away. Roughness, I'm going to increase to 0.85. And again, that takes some of the shine away, but it still gives us a tiny bit. Now, believe it or not, that's mostly the actual plaid texture in place. So we can see there. But what I like to do, as you know, is just add that little bit extra. So I'm going to shift those up a bit. And I'm going to, oops. I'm going to duplicate the two mapping nodes. Connect up the UV texture again. I'm going to add a wave texture. And duplicate that. I'm going to add a color ramp and duplicate that. And then I'm going to mix those two together. Oops, mix those two together. And 
and then I'm going to add a bump node and that's going to get plugged into the normal socket of the principal shader. So let me just isolate the bump node here. You can see already it's got something going on, but it's not quite what I want. So I am going to plug the color from the mix shader into the height value. On these color ramps, I'm going to change the color mode to constant. Going to move that white value to 0.9 and the same for the other one. I'm going to connect up the color values from the wave textures into each of those and you can see we've got this weird striping going on. I'm going to connect the vector from the mapping node to the vector in the wave texture and the same for this one. Here I'm leaving it as bands X and sine, but here I'm going to change the bands direction to Y. So we've now got them crisscrossing. I'm going to increase the scale on both of those to 100. And everything else is going to be set to zero. So we can press Alt and then click and drag down so that we can put zero in all of those values. Looks like it didn't pick up the detail roughness, so we have to do that manually. Now we've almost got like a waffle texture going on there, which is good. And then just to soften that off a, a bit, we're going to drop the strength on the bump node to 0.5 and the distance to point zero 0.01. Okay, let's bring back in all of the other bits. So we can see now we've got some kind of weaving going on. Uh, when it comes to the scale, I do have to switch these around. So where you see the um, axis value here is Y, you need the large value to be there. So let's switch those around. And the same here, X and X. So that softened it off much to a much finer waffle texture. And there's nothing else for me to do there. To be honest, this bit, like I said, you don't have to do. That's just to give it the extra texture. This bit is the bit that's going to give you the actual plaid um, itself. You can, of course, change the overall scale so that you have bigger patches. By reducing the number they get bigger and by increasing that number they get smaller. Okay so let's render that out and see what we get. I'm using Cycles Rend Engine and 128 samples with just basic direct lighting setup with a few area lights. Doop. Render image. Oh, and I forgot to say I'm using tiling. So there we go, less than eight seconds and we've got ourselves a nice basic plaid fabric. Okay, that's it for this one. I hope you found it useful and will give the video a thumbs up before you leave. And of course, subscribe for future content. Don't forget I've got a growing library of these free tutorials about different fabric shaders for all sorts of different things. So please do make sure to go back and watch the full playlist. Uh, I would very much appreciate that. In the meantime, thanks for watching.